7%, but the final five kilometres of climbing, Phil, average out at 11%. It's one of those nasty climbs that gets steeper as you get towards the summit. So they'll need more than a 25 tooth on the back of those clusters, won't they? I think they'll need uh, probably a big plate on the back of the yeah. clusters there to get them up this climb towards the end. But let's not forget, today's stage, a short stage, 153 kilometres, but they've been over already three first category climbs. They're going to finish on this climb of the Vitaya. There will be an explosion. Well, we as commentators can't wait for the riders to start the climb, but I suspect that's not the feeling with all of the riders in today's stage of the Shiro. We're not far away from starting the last climb of the day. We'll just take another break. Presenting Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. So revolutionary, it targets and kills the toughest weeds without harming your lawn. Ortho Weed Be Gone sprayed here. Ordinary weed killer here. Only Ortho Weed Be Gone has a foaming action and weed targeting formula for total root kill. So it killed the weeds, but not the grass. The ordinary weed killer killed everything. Ortho Weed Be Gone Max. Kills weeds, not lawns. Guaranteed. Also available with crabgrass control. Spain is my enemy. This bike, my ally. Together, our endurance is unmatched. Our performance, unstoppable. Any distance, any road. I am Tom Bonin. I am specialized. Going over and over, stopping and starting, waking up to go, lots of guys experience male urinary symptoms due to BPH, also known as an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax reduces their urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not a more serious condition like prostate cancer. Avoid driving or hazardous tasks for 12 hours after your first dose or increase in dose as a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Common side effects are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Ask your doctor if Flomax is right for you. For many men, Flomax can make a difference in one week. Today, the formula for the best margarita. Excuse me, sir. Isn't it the tequila that makes a great margarita? I always start with Jose Cuervo. These Cuervo margaritas are genius! The best tasting margaritas are always made with Jose Cuervo. How do you get even better gas mileage from a Suzuki? How about free gas? That's right. Get any Suzuki with 0% financing, and you'll get a summer's worth of gas free. All just in time for a summer adventure. Since Suzuki is great on gas to begin with, it just doesn't get much better than this. Free gas with 0% financing. Hurry in. I am the off-season. Waiting for you to get knocked out of the playoffs. No more ice. No more skates. No more fans. Just you and me. I am the Stanley Cup playoffs on Versus. We're back. We're still on the descent here, heading towards the final climb of the day. In today's stage, the Queen stage of the Giro d'Italia. They call it the Queen stage because, in theory, it's the toughest stage of the race. But believe me, there are tough stages still to come in the final week. And there are five leaders clear now. Now, Bob, yesterday um, we saw a resurgent, if you like, from Christian van der Velde. He was absolutely brilliant in the break yesterday of Slipstream Chipotle. Uh, there are six riders left in the nine-man team. Three have now dropped out, Magnus Baxter, Patrick McCarthy, and, of course, the unfortunate uh, Dave Zabisky right out of the beginning. But they've made their impression on this their first year, haven't they? Absolutely. They came to the Giro d'Italia. They wanted to do something in the team time trial that happened to be the very first stage of the race. Because of that, Christian Vandeville became only the second American to ever wear the pink jersey in this great race. Yesterday, he was in the breakaway, had a great day out on the roads, but maybe spent a little bit too much energy, and he is a ways back now today. We don't see any slipstream riders in the first big group with Contador. Yeah, but I wouldn't discount them down on the running towards the finish because we've got a big mountain time trial to come. That could be the, the terrain for 
uh, David Miller to perform. I think Miller's in great form. And, of course, uh, there are a number of flat stages still left to go, and that's a, an ideal situation. When the overall classification has been sorted out like this, Bob, you know that's the day to look for a breakaway. Right, we saw support there for Gilberto Simone on the top of the mountain. He has got a big fan club, but again, he's been yo-yoing today. He is in the chase group, but he was unhitched on the previous climb. He got back in a group of seven riders and uh, to form that chasing group. Uh, Levi Leipheimer, if you're just joining us, I'm afraid we haven't seen him all day. He seemed to be dropped fairly early on today, along with the pink jersey, Bosiso, and... Uh, and uh, and there's no way he's going to come back now. I think it's been a little bit of a race too far from his form. wasn't quite there when he came to this race. Not expecting to be in the Giro, hoping to do something in the Vuelta, but that's not until September. So I think that yeah. Levi probably goes really surprised to find out he was going to be racing in one of the toughest races. And if you look at the profile of the last week of the Giro d'Italia, it's absolutely brutal. Well, that's what, what makes me wonder about how Alberto Contador is going to perform there at yeah. 15 kilometers to go as the leading group goes through, because he too, on a number of occasions on the climb, has indicated that he's not able to, to show that great acceleration that he had in the month of July last year. After all, he probably had the worst preparation for the Giro because not only was he sick, he'd been to the dentist beforehand, he was on the beach when he got the phone call to, to come and get themselves uh, ready for this race. So it'll be interesting to see how he's going to handle the ma massive climb of the Paso Fadaya. A lot of people are still looking a little bit shaky here. De Lucas tried one attack on the previous climb and he ripped away, he got brought back, but I wonder. And Pelazotti is another man I'd be watching very closely on the last climb as well. At the moment, though, it's De Luca's teammate here, he's looking a bit too strong for these boys on the descent. Jure Golcha, the Slovenian, he's been doing all of the work, uh, tried to protect uh, uh, Basisio originally, but of course he's gone now, so now he's looking after last year's winner, uh, De Luca. And the other man we haven't seen, Specialetti is in this group as well for De Luca's team, but the one man who's missing is um, Savadelli Bob. Paolo Savadelli not making the juncture, had a great ride yesterday to help De Luca. Danilo De Luca still looking to uh, do something special in the Giro d'Italia this year, and uh, it's been a very, very tough stage, and uh, you can't expect each team to have all their guys in the front. That's just impossible, but LPR has had a great Giro so far. Bocizio, he had the pink jersey, and maybe it's Savadelli was sent back to shepherd him through this stage, but he's lost big chunks of time already. So looking down from the helicopter here now, uh, we're still waiting to see a real superstar emerge from this peloton pool to show us he's a solid leader of the tour because there are still probably seven or eight riders will feel they can win this race overall. I think there are. I think Pelazotti thinks he's got a great chance, but now he's put in a rather strange situation. Unless he's got really good legs, he can't chase his teammate who we're looking at here in the lime green, uh, Vicenzi Nibali. Again, it's nice to see sort of the renewing of the young blood coming forward because Nibali yeah. is just 23 years of age. He's had a fairly good season so far this year, especially in the Giro Trentino, which he won just before the start of this race. All right, these are the leading five. We're in the village at the bottom. There's only one way to go now. That's the top and the finish in the Dolomites. We'll be right there and we'll see you in just a moment. Circus. Yeah, Dad, is it? Farmer's Help Point. Sanity makes a comeback. Start 
Cyclism Sundays, it's on. From the island of Sicily to the streets of Milan, the race to where the Maglia Rosa is on. All month, the eyes of the cycling world turn to Italy for the first leg of cycling's triple crown. The Giro d'Italia concludes next Sunday, 3 Eastern. Cyclism Sundays presented by Hampton Hotels. Only on Versus, the home of the Tour de France. The Yamaha Get Out and Ride event with huge deals on Yamaha motorcycles, ATVs, and Rhino side-by-sides. So get into your Yamaha dealer, then get out and ride. Now get up to 750 customer cash on select models, plus low monthly payments on every Yamaha. Save this spring and get out and ride. Visit your local participating Yamaha dealer today. When someone abducts a child, they're not about to advertise it, but we will. Sign up at wirelessamberalerts.org to get free Amber Alert text messages on your cell phone. Help put a child abductor out of business for good. Wireless Amber Alerts. A child is calling for help. I have favor. Defends his title against the UFC legend Jens Little Evil Pulver. See it live on Versus June 1 at 9 Eastern. And tomorrow, follow these two warriors as they prepare for the fight of their lives. WEC Outside the Cage preview show tomorrow after Hockey Central only on Versus. Welcome back. Um, oh, and what's happened as we come back? There's a crash here. It looks like people he's gone down. It does. Well, this, this must have happened in the group behind because Leonardo Pimpoli, I don't think, was in the group containing Simone and Contador. But whatever's happened, it's just happened on the descent as they were dropping into that start village for the last climb up. Pimpoli, the teammate of Ricardo Rico, down hard, and it doesn't look like he's making any movement whatsoever to get back on his way. Although he is putting on his rain jacket, that might be just to get into the ambulance and keep dry a little yeah. bit. But very tough crash for Pimpoli. Well, the uh, quick-step team car has stopped at the side of the road, and uh, because he was somewhere in the middle of the, the race action, yeah. it's taking a while for the race doctors to actually get up there and look after him. But it was good to see that, that I think that looks like, could well be Wilfred Peters who stopped there. I think I, you're absolutely yeah. right. This is the quick-step team car yeah. that stopped to help Piepoli, and they don't see the Sonny Eduval car, so uh, uh, care being given to Leonardo Piepoli, who is in a lot, of, a lot of pain right now. Well, remember, this race is spread eagle now. Team cars are all over the mountains here, and it might be a while before for. That was a very sporting gesture there by Quickstep to call off the road and get on and help that rider. He doesn't look uh, too good. Looks like he might have broken his left arm or collarbone there. Anyway, we're back with the leaders here now. There's the five names for you. They've been three of them at least have been in command the whole day today. Emmanuel Seller looking for his second consecutive stage win in the Dolomites. As we're looking now at the Paso Federa, there's the statistics over 2,057 metres it goes to. They actually climb 1,059 metres on this final climb, 13 kilometres of climbing. The average is 8%, but Phil, at 2.5 kilometres to go, it goes up to 18%. Well, that is really steep. That's approximately, in old money, one in five. And now it looks as though Sella is deciding it's time to go for gold. Unbelievable so, today. Sella looking around and deciding, now is the moment I'm going to attack. He didn't even wait for about five pedal strokes before he launched <laughs> his first attack on this climb. And no reaction from the other riders in the breakaway. He is riding so well in the Giro d'Italia well, this year. Well, there's nobody really to react except Nibali. I thought Nibali might have gone with him there because he's got two teammates that will take out Rodriguez at the back there. But Nibali, he's looking for the pink jersey and Sella's looking for the king of the mountains. Every reason to have gone with him. Maybe he could fall. Well, it kind of blows away my uh, tactical uh, analysis of Team Liquid Gas with him being the man to possibly take the Maglia Rosa here this afternoon. I think the situation is he's going to have to be the leapfrog man for Franco Pelizzotti, who is in the second group, the Grupo Contador that you can see just on the right-hand side. But we're still looking for almost two minutes, the Group Contador, to pull back to Emmanuel Seller. Although uh, I have to see, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Vicenzi Nibali can recover because the first couple of kilometres of a climb like this after a long descent can be very difficult. Yeah, the legs seize up a little bit, don't they, before they loosen up again. By the way, overall, Emmanuel Sella is sitting in 26th place, but he's looking for seven and a half minutes. And so for that reason alone, the favourites are still in boxing here. They're not too much worried about what he does up front. There is the face of the killer. That's his nickname. 
Danilo De Luca, last year's winner, and he really looks quite fierce today, Bob. He's attacked already on the Paso de Jao. There's Ricardo Rico, Contador. This is the group of the on-the-road virtual leader. That would be Alberto Contador, but uh, it will be a very tall order for him to keep that by the time we get to the finish line. That's Maxime Iglinski, the champion of Kazakhstan, the only other Astana rider to make that front front group. Still Levi well. Leipheimer and Cloden, they've been dropped early on in the stage. Iglinski's a very rare sprinter who can actually climb mountains. He's a great champion, champion of Kazakhstan, as Bob said. That's why he's a slightly different colored Team Astana strip. We're looking here at Emmanuel Seller. He's not too worried at all about the overall classification. He wants to get himself a little bit of glory on these mountain stages. At the moment in that group behind, Alberto Contador is the man who is the best placed in the overall classification, but he's only got a 23-second advantage over Marzio Brusegin, who a few moments ago, Bob, when we saw the Lamprey rider, there he is, was looking very comfortable indeed. Very comfortable. He's been riding right in the front of this group. There's Jurgen Vandenbroek having a good climbing day also. This is going to be a great finale, but you got to hand it to Emanuele Sela. He has left his companions. He's two minutes ahead of this group, and I don't think that anybody's going to catch him before the top of the climb. Well, these boys can't shadow box all day today. They're going to have to try and prize open the gaps. Tomorrow is only a short time trial, just on 13 kilometers, but it's a mountain time trial. It's all uphill. And then they get their second rest day on Tuesday. So there's a lot of time at stake here these next two days. Well, Sella is absolutely flying here. This is a slightly flatter part of the course. In the bottom part of the climb, as I explained earlier, you've got some very low gradients of 3 and 4% before it then starts to kick up as you get up towards the 12th and 13th kilometer of this climb. So this man taking advantage, not wanting to lose very much of his lead, and almost a two-minute lead still over the favorites. But in that group of favorites behind, I think, with Alberto Contador, what they have to do is they've got to actually go out and put time between themselves and Contador, because Danilo De Luca, if he wants to win the Giro, needs time before the mountain time trial, where I think Contador is going to be phenomenal. And, of course, that's the same scenario for Franco Pelizzotti. They have to attack once we get to the steeper part of this climb. And let's not forget either, Contador still riding with that hairline fracture of the elbow, which makes it quite painful uh, when he gets down in that time trialing position, but they may not be using uh, the usual time trial bikes tomorrow on the mountain time trial. Ten kilometers to go for the revelation this past two days of the Giro d'Italia. He's not been beaten up a single Dolomites climb these past two days, and he's now going for gold at the finish line. We'll take a break. having you here. Going somewhere? <laughs> what are you in for? Wi-Fi? Break free from Wi-Fi with broadband access from Verizon Wireless. Click to connect and work in more spots than just hotspots on America's most reliable wireless broadband network. Now get a free broadband access modem. Monthly plan starting at $39.99. It's reliability to go. Verizon Wireless. The winner of Europe's SUV of the year with 200 turbocharged horses. <coughs> you done? The all new Volkswagen Tiguan. Wait, Europe's SUV of the year? You're so compact, you're practically my size. Europeans are crazy. Uh, technically, I'm European. Exactly. Woo! I had a clever comeback! Ah, the feast is mine! Yikes! And the way! Who's that guy? What an unusual character. So he's going away with Avis. Again. He'll probably get the where to GPS so he can find all his precious fancy coffees and driving ranges on his business trip. Fine. That's the way he wants it? Fine. Forget about him. You don't need him. Did he just look back? I think he looked back. Where to GPS can find anything from a driving range to a latte. Just one more reason Avis is your other car. 
This is going to be the most intense thing I've ever witnessed. Jackass presents Matt Hoffman's tribute to Evil Knievel. Wow. Coming to DVD May 27th. Evil, I hope you're watching because this is for you. Welcome back. We're seeing the clock counting here. It's on that uh, 10 kilometer to go, but I think it was that we're looking. This is uh, Perez here. Is it Perez? Yeah. Yeah, he's talking to the teammate here. I think it's actually for Baliani. Baliani, Baliani. There, yes. Uh, and Nibali, who has been uh, kept under control up front, it's Sella. There's the time check on the banner there. And already, uh, Sella has got nearly a minute on that group. He left them at the bottom of the climb. He's riding on his top chain ring just now. It's an absolutely incredible acceleration. In just a few kilometers, he's opened up a minute on that group. And here we see some of the chasers. It's people. Is it people? Just have a look I here. I think this is Petrov. This is oh, one of the riders top. who was in the early breakaway of nine riders. Those nine riders got away very early on uh, on the first climb of the day, the Podoy. And I think uh, Evgeny Petrov there, he's actually in reverse gear, not in forward. In fact, I'm hearing, Paul, that uh, uh, Pipili has got a broken collarbone. So I thought the way he was sitting, it'll be his left collarbone. That's that sad. That's a he's shame such a, because... such an animator of the race. He was last year as well. He was a great man in the big mountain passes and a great ally for the man there with the white jersey, the Ricardo Rico. He would have needed a man like uh, Pipili alongside him on the big mountain stages if he wants to go forward and win this bike race. And Rico, let's not forget, started the day in fourth place overall. But look at Menchov there in the orange. He looks very powerful. He does, and he's sitting on the wheel of Alberto Contador, who was giving nothing away. He looked very cool, calm and collected just at this minute. But we have seen him with a face of agony on some of the climbs today. And what about uh, Danilo De Luca, Bob? He looks very calm. De Luca sitting on the wheel of his teammate, Spezialetti. They have lost already two minutes to Sella. So that acceleration to attack his group from Sella has put more distance between himself and the race leaders on the road and the men we expect to contend for the overall, including that man, Ricardo Rico. Contador right on his wheel. And uh, that's the LPR team doing a great job. Sylvester Smid coming to the front to do a bit of tempo as well. And look at Franco Pellizzotti. Just you get the feeling he wants to attack and he's ready for it and this climb is the place to do it well look at the high revving here Sylvester Smith uh, setting the pace here for Lamprey and in particular for Bruce Eugene who's a bit further down the line you may notice some of these riders with a little band across their nostrils well that's to flare the nostrils to get more air down uh, they seem to be coming back into fashion Paul. well they were fashionable about 10 12 years ago when Jan Ulrich used to use them and now they seem to be uh, back on the rise again one of those things uh, maybe it's a fashion statement as well Bob because I've never really been convinced about how well that actually works De designed as a um, anti-snoring device for people to, that uh, can't get quite enough oxygen in well, you know all about that, wouldn't so, you? so that's why you wear one Bob, <laughs> I wear one all the time <laughs> <laughs> here we are we found the pink jersey at the moment the Malia Rosa he looks as though he may have fell because he's got an open wound on his left elbow there, but he was certainly with the group and he was dropped by that group. And, um, well, we think he's about six or seven minutes down, but he's enjoyed the one day, and let's face it, it was a surprise day for him to get picked. It was a surprise day and a glorious day for him uh, in the Malia Rosa. He's six minutes and 28 seconds behind Emmanuel Silla, so that puts him around about four and a half minutes behind the uh, group of Alberto Contador, and there is Contador. There is Denny Menchov. He's a hard man, isn't he, Bob? Absolutely tough as nails, and he's having a very good day out in the Dolomites. Look for him to contend for the overall. He wanted to do something special in the Giro d'Italia this year. He he earmarked it as one of the races he would like to do well in, including the Tour de France. So he might have put all of his eggs in the Giro basket, and let's see what kind of fruit they bear. But Menchov riding great so far. Well, let's not forget he's twice won the Vuelta Espana. That comes up in September. And last year he led the Vuelta for the last 13 days of the race. So he's a boy that knows how to ride, and he's got steadily better throughout this year. I thought he was not going to be a part of the front runners after the first week, but he most certainly is. Well, here we are, Emmanuel Seller. Can't believe the way he's riding this year, but he is riding simply superbly. And it's beginning to look, Bob, as though he might win this. He's going to definitely have a great shot. If he hasn't gone too hard too early, Emmanuel Isela is still accelerating away from this group. They were with him just a few kilometers ago, but they've lost probably more than a minute right now. And all the way back down to the group with Simone, with Pelizzotti, with De Luca, and with Contador, he's more than two and a half minutes ahead of them. Yes, and these four riders might well get picked up by the chasers, but, you know, 
when there's confusion and you can't count correctly, they may not realise this man is still ahead on his own. And he is absolutely flying on this road. The hill is yet to bite, and we know that those riders behind are going to attack one another because they could well decide the new order of the Giro d'Italia on this very climb on this very day. We'll take a break and rejoin us. A hunter in West Virginia used it to get off the perfect shot. A rancher in Montana used it to pound in miles of fence posts. And a guide in Colorado used it to climb over a jagged ridgeline. Electric power steering from Honda. You'll be amazed how much more you can achieve when riding your ATV doesn't wear you out. Available on the Fortrax Foreman. If you're fed up with the pump, then meet Chevy's MVPs of MPG. Aveo, HHR, Malibu, Cobalt XFE, to name a few. Chevy, seven models that offer an EPA estimated 30 miles per gallon highway or better. Now that's an American revolution. Unleash your full potential and optimize your body's performance with Gamma O. Gamma O is an all-natural testosterone booster guaranteed to make you stronger, faster, more energetic. Gamma O is a state-of-the-art supplement designed to enhance male performance, proven to increase power, endurance, and sex drive while burning off unwanted fat and building lean muscle. Guaranteed. Get the results you're looking for with Gamma O. Gamma O. Available at select general nutrition centers and other fine health food stores nationwide. Every parent knows the feeling. You look away and your child is gone. Imagine if he or she were actually abducted. Sign up at wirelessamberalerts.org to get free Amber Alert text messages on your cell phone. If you did help an abducted child get home, just imagine what his parents would be feeling. Wireless Amber Alerts. A child is calling for help. Super relaxing mattress at an equally relaxing price. Come down to Denver Mattress during our Memorial Day savings event. Right now, for the first time ever, you'll get no payments and no interest for two and a half years. But hurry, this offer ends soon. Denver Mattress, more mattress, less money. Trophy in sports tomorrow night versus NHL Stanley Cup coverage continues from Hockey Town with game two between the Pittsburgh Penguins and the Detroit Red Wings. Game two tomorrow night starting at 7.30 Eastern only here on Versus. Welcome back. As we look down here, it's like racing into the belly of the shark here. Bob Roll has just been telling us during the break. He says, wait till it really kicks up. Tell us again, Bob. Well, when you see him come around the next couple of corners, you'll see a stretch of road that's about two kilometers long that goes straight up to the stratosphere. And what it spells to me in those days, P-A-I-N, pain. Nothing but pain <laughs> and suffering. <laughs> Well, well, you know, it's painful too, Paul, even for the climbers, not just the non-climbers. I think you've just got to go through pain just to get up to the top of one of these climbs, and that's the difficult thing. You, you always forget of the pain that the men at the front trying to win the bike race are actually going through. The guys in the back sometimes actually have a slightly easier ride, although you've got to be on your maximum just to get up these climbs. It is, to me, though, the most difficult part of this climb, at two and a half kilometres to go, where it kicks in at 18%, as we said. Danilo De Luca there trying to concentrate now and get himself ready for his attack to try and get himself up in the yellow, in the Malia Rosa rankings. You can see how steep it is as we go yeah, through these gorges up. here because Seller really is fighting with his machine. Well, what a lovely climb in a beautiful countryside here. As Seller now, the leader in the King of the Mountain, the only man to wear the green jersey. He got it on stage two, the first chance. There's never long. There's Levi Leipheimer. We've seen him for the first time. 
I'm not too sure where we are because that's Jeremy Watt in Francais de Jeu at the front. So this must be a group behind the group containing Contador. And there's and Sabadell is here too. Yeah. And this might be the pink jersey group. So uh, we'll see if we can get. And that might be Cloden right there, Andres Cloden as well in this group. So that might be the pink jersey group that uh, Bocizio started the day. I think he's further back. I think they're in front of the pink jersey, Bob. You think the pink jersey's by himself back there? great thing about the mountains is it's very complicated to try and understand exactly what's going on in the race. We do know that Emmanuel Seller is leading ahead of this group of four riders. You can just see on the front now, Rodriguez has decided to come to the front. He's got the legs and he's thinking, uh, I need to chase down the Emmanuel Seller if I want to get myself a victory here this afternoon. But this young man over the last two days really has written his name into the history books. Now, at the, if the situation stays like this, then the obvious successor for the pink jersey is indeed Alberto Contador. It would mean that uh, Basicio would slip to 27th overall if he keeps at eight minutes. I suspect he'll lose even more than that by the end of the day. But Contador is only at five seconds behind Basicio, so he's now the leader on the road. Ruscegin is 23 seconds behind Contador in real time. So he just needs to outspring Contador by a couple of hundred meters to take the lead himself. Rico, he sits there at 58 seconds off the pace, so he could do it as well. Uh, De Luca, he's only one minute, two seconds behind. So you see, uh, if they all make the move in the last kilometer, they could completely destroy the overall classification. The man who wants to make the move today, I think, is Denny Menchoff. He's a minute 13 behind uh, Alberto Contador in the overall classification. And yesterday, Bob, he looked very strong on the final kilometer and a half. And in the final two kilometers of the stage today I reckon a man who's got the power can easily pull back a minute. Mitchell did leave Simone behind and De Luca in the last climb. It was only 4k and this is a totally different stage but Denny Menchov looking very dangerous at the moment. Well the crowd have enjoyed their journey up the uh, the dire today as we pass through a little uh, Dolomite village and uh, thankfully without any snow and as far as we know the rain has eased a bit at the top of the mountain as well as we climb up four and a half hours in the saddle today for what is I think it's a pretty short stage it's just on 95 miles uh, but their second full day in the Dolomites and this man has passed over the top of every mountain summit uh, winning all of the points so he's putting in the bag the king of the mountains competition and Emmanuel Seller is now receiving all of the cheers from the Tufosi here as he heads up towards the finishing line Boy, he still looks extremely strong the way this man is climbing. Is he going to get back-to-back -back stage wins in the Dolomites? He's got to win by about seven minutes if he's any thoughts of the pink jersey. That's a tough ask. We'll take a break. La mia bici e il mio corpo sono una sola cosa. La sua rigidità e la mia forza creano potenza. La sua precisione ed il mio coraggio creano agilità. Insieme. Siamo velocità. E la velocità è tutto. Io sono il campione del mondo, Paolo Bettini. I am specialized. What if we could replace something harmful with water? The Honda Fuel Cell Vehicle, a car that emits no pollution, only clean water vapor. And then it hits you. Is my car insurance any good? With Nationwide Insurance, you get 24-7 claims processing at a savings of up to $500 when you switch. Call 1-888-891-0165, and you'll also get 100% written guarantee on claims repairs at a savings of up to $500 when you switch. Plus, get a free Nationwide on your side review to find out exactly the coverage you need, including discounts you might not even know about. And don't forget about the whole $500 savings when you switch. Hello, Nationwide. Call Nationwide Insurance or contact an agent to get your free on your side review and see how much you can save when you switch. Better call for better coverage. 1-888-891-0165. Nationwide is on your side. I am $6 a bottle. But I'm the finest champagne you will ever taste. I am 
the Stanley Cup playoffs on Versus. Five kilometers to go oh. to the summit. On a flat stage, Phil, that would be around about six minutes of racing, but Bob, it's going to be a little bit longer now. It's going to take about 20 minutes, I think, to climb this last 5Ks, just over three miles to the finish for Emanuele Sela. But for the rest of the peloton, they are a long ways down the road and scattered all over the Dolomites today. Well, that's going to be a tremendous boost now, and he's seen that five kilometers to go. He's on his own. He's gaining over the chases. The chases are still to surrender to the group behind them, led by last year's overall winner, Danilo De Luca. Italian cyclists, uh, ever thus, have had a tremendous tour so far, Bob. They've won uh, 10 out of a possible 14 stages. Not bad, is it? Not too bad at all. And uh, one man, Danile Benatti, has won three of them himself. The yes. great Italian sprinter has announced that he's one of the fastest men in the world. But Mark Cavendish has had a great zero as well. It's like Felix Cardenas was the rider from Barlow World. They're slipping off the back now, too. Uh, as you can see, so is Jens Voigt. Cardenas was in that early morning breakaway with Jens. But I always admire the courage of this big man yep. from Germany. He doesn't care at all. He's always on the breakaway. There's Matthew Lloyd, the Australian national champion he I think has had a, a very good incursion in the Giro d'Italia and I think over the next couple of years he's the kind of rider who we're going to see develop and maybe following the wheel marks of Cadell Evans yes he's got time is on his side he's only a young man and uh, he's certainly looking very very good and he's gaining in confidence at the most difficult time of the race this year so that's a good sign this man, you can't say more than great things about him right now because he's, he's looking for the back-to-back -back stage win here in the Dolomites. And uh, goodness knows when there was a, a rider previously, Bob, who's won every climb in the mountain range. And here's the Cloden group, Levi in there as well. And uh, we don't see the pink jersey, but he might be tucked in there as well. No, this I is think Cloden's group back. a long ways behind our race leader, Emmanuel Isela, in the top left-hand corner of your screen. Nice little uh, four-camera angle. Second group, just to the right of Sella, and then the group with Contador is in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Still pacemaking being done here by uh, Alessandro Specialetti, who himself occupies a fairly high position overall, uh, but he's prepared to sacrifice that, I think, to launch Danilo De Luca as we get towards the end of today. He's going to have to go soon, Paul. I reckon when they see that five kilometre to go banner. Yes, in fact, I think the reason we went to that uh, four-shot image there was because uh, the producer uh, out on the field, he can't quite decide where the race action is going to come <laughs> from next, so he wanted to keep all of his things covered. It's Pelizzotti. Is it now? Is it now? Because Pelizzotti started to stamp on the pedals. He tried this on the previous climb. It took a while to haul him back in, but it was De Luca who issued the counter-attack that did bring him back in and got rid of Contador but Contador got back well Pelizzotti uh, when he uh, first came to the fore was regarded in 2001 as the revelation of Italian cycling and he's been uh, promising to do something good for a number of years and maybe this is going to be the year of Pelizzotti there you can see uh, Iglinski he's the teammate of Alberto Contador I'm just looking to see why we're moving backwards here and I don't think it's for Contador at all it's in fact Bruce Jean who seems to be slipping off the back there well, that's a little bit of a surprise. He's not a great climber, but even so, I didn't think he would have slipped away. The clock is still counting, remember, at the uh, kilometre signs. And this is the group, and Pelizzotti is still anxious to dish out a little bit of pain here. De Luca was very attentive there. Uh, Pelizzotti held the race lead for four days, and he said he wasn't going to defend it, but he would get it back. Well, this is the moment he's planned, I reckon. Well, they're all trying to get onto the wheel of Franco Pelizzotti here, as we can see that acceleration. You have to respond, I think, here. A little bit further up, Emmanuel Seller is uh, around about a kilometre and a half, but look at the time gap. It was two minutes at the start of the climb. It's now three minutes and 33 seconds. They've lost time. Emmanuel Seller's flying. It's unbelievable. They've, they've gained time on the group, but they've lost time on Seller. He's still pulling away. Seller's so continuing to pull away. Pelizzotti making that first acceleration under in the steep part of the Paso Fedaya and uh, a lot of very tired legs in Yajiro. You can imagine. It looks like Simone is trying to match that acceleration with Rico on his wheel. Just behind him there, you can see Alberto Contador in the lime blue of Team Astana. Glinski just slipping off the back. Menchov has not made a move yet so far, just sitting there, binding his time. He knows that in two and a half kilometers time, they come to the steepest part of the climb. We think it's been steep so far, but at two and a half kilometers to go, a lot further for this man, Andreas Cloden, a little bit further down there. It climbs up to 18%, and that's going to be really difficult. Well, there's a rather nice uh, bromide black and white shot of uh, the leader of the race today, Emmanuel Sella. As we're going back to the riders here, which are now beginning to break up just a little bit here now. Pelosotti is tempting them all to come out and play. Well, they're scrabbling. 
I'm just wondering, uh, Bob, if all these guys are fully committed and whether there's not much between any of them. They are very close on GC at the start of this very last climb in the Dolomites, and uh, it could be anything could happen. It looks like uh, Menchov was in a little bit of trouble there at the back, yeah. but no trouble for this man, Emmanuel Esela, three minutes, 33 seconds ahead of Contador's group with five kilometers to go. And I'd say, you have to say, just looking at his style here, he doesn't look like a man who is starting to weaken. He's riding extremely strongly. The man in second position there, by the way, I'm sure you all know him, is Domenico Pozzovivo. Yes, I know him well. He's been, he's been in the action quite a lot, never heard of him. But nonetheless, Paul, this Navagore team is inspired this year. All of them riding so well. Three of them have retired. One, most sadly, Matteo Priamo, uh, who won the stage and then crashed out. Well, this is the rider now, and is the who is next to attack? Flexing legs here is Ricardo Rico. Nobody seems to want to put it home. Well, they're going to have to do it sooner or later. We'll take a quick break and hope we miss nothing. See you in a moment. What would you do if I sang out of tune? Would you stand up and walk out on me? Lend me your ears and I'll sing you a song and I'll try not to sing a key. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. Yeah, I'm going to try with a little help from my friends. Oh, I get by with a little help from my friends. With a little help from my friends. At Hampton, we love having you here. Torture tested two cars to prove a point about maximum horsepower. The black car with Castrol Syntec, the red, the leading conventional oil. In torture tests, Castrol Syntec 5W30 maintained maximum horsepower 29% longer. Conventional oil got smoked. Don't you use conventional oil? <coughs> Not anymore. Want more proof? Go to CastrolSyntec.com. It's more than just oil, it's liquid engineering. Mazda now offers you a choice of two crossover SUVs, the sports car inspired CX-7 and the seven passenger CX-9. We'll spoil you at every turn. The five passenger CX-7 and the seven passenger CX-9. Designed and engineered the Zoom Zoom way. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Right now, cross over to Mazda and lease an 08 Mazda CX-9 front wheel drive sport for $299 a month for 24 months with $29.99 due at lease signing. Visit your Denver area Mazda dealer for a test drive today. Zoom, zoom my lesson on eBay, you'll be so satisfied that the next time you need to learn anything about computers, you'll come back to Video Professor for all your computer learning needs. And with over 55 lessons on all of today's most popular computer programs, I know that there's more you'll want to learn. Don't forget, call now and I'll send you eBay or any other lesson of your choice free. So what do you got to lose? Try my product. Call 1-800-930-9054. Cyclism Sundays, it's on. From the island of Sicily to the streets of Milan, the race to where the Maglia Rosa is on. All month, the eyes of the cycling world turn to Italy for the first leg of cycling's triple crown. The Giro d'Italia concludes next Sunday, 3 Eastern. Cyclism Sundays presented by Hampton Hotels. Only on Versus, the home of the Tour de France. Cyclism Sunday's coverage of Giro d'Italia on Versus is presented by Hampton Hotels. At Hampton, we love having you here. And by Captain Morgan Original Spiced Rum. Drink responsibly. Captain's orders. Welcome back. And as you rejoin us here, we're looking at Menchov and uh, Contador. But the man who's just launched the attack is Rico. And he's really turning the screw tight. Well, there you can see they've joined him now. Menchov, I think, covering all of the moves. And as I said earlier, Alberto Contador doesn't really need to attack, does he, Bob? Because as far as we're concerned, as we see Rodriguez, the champion of Spain, going backwards, Contador is the man in the driving seat. He's on the defensive, but I'll tell you ah, what, his legs are looking a little bit ouch. Very much on the defensive here, and the pressure being applied. We've got Contador twice in the break where it appears, but even so, once will do. And this is Rico, and it looks as though Rico knows he's hurt, and now he's cracked Menchov as well. So Rico is going to try and prize open what could be here, a race to the next pink jersey. Remember, he sits in fourth place, but he will need to get a lead of about 57 seconds over Contador to get pink. 
He is just one, almost one minute behind Alberto Contador, but he's still got quite a bit of roadway. There is Simone. He is in a world of hurt right now. He is in trouble. That's Rodriguez. He was in the break. He's been dropped. Julio Perez has been dropped, and Contador really struggling now. He's lost the wheel of Ricardo Rico, Rico, who's put in a really blistering acceleration. But Contador trying to struggle back to the wheel of Denny Menchov, and there is Rico, who's done the damage to the front group. This is the part of the climb I was telling you about, at two and a half kilometers to go. It goes up to 18%. That's why you can see the style of these riders out of the saddle. Very rarely do you see Alberto Contador put into difficulty like this, but this is the man that's doing all of the damage. Uh, Ricardo Rico, two stage victory so far on this uh, race and we're looking on the left hand side at Emmanuel Seller the winner yesterday he's also now starting to feel a little bit of pain coming into those legs and that's not much of a surprise well, Rico's just past three kilometers to go there so Seller is probably at two kilometers from the finish of the race maybe slightly less than that he's going to win the stage and what a win crossing all of the mountains in two days and winning every climb in a race of this quality absolutely outstanding riding by Emmanuel Seller but his whole team is unbelievable today. The Navigare CF, CSF team has uh, really done some serious climbing on today's stage. And they have put this man in a position to win the stage. He just needs to get through the rest of it. But Ricardo Rico for the GC is the man of the moment. And he has put the other favorites in serious difficulty. De Luca immediately drops Simone in trouble. Contador and Menchov, they're also struggling to stay on the wheel of Ricardo Rico. But that man in blue and white, that is Contador. He needs to conserve about one minute's time to Ricardo Rico and get the next pink jersey. But the pink jersey is definitely up for grabs today. Paul, I don't think it's over yet. I, I would watch out. Ricardo could be coming up to the leader here. He certainly could. He was looking very smooth and very comfortable. 1.6 kilometers to go for the man in the green jersey, the Scott King of the Mountains jersey there. They're going absolutely ballistic behind him. I think that was one of Julio Perez's supporters there trying to yeah. encourage him. There's Danilo De Luca. A little bit further forward, that looks like Gilberto Simone. Up in front there, you can see Alberto Contador. And, of course, Denny Menchov is the strong, solid man from Russia. Well, what, what about this, Bob? But De Luca is coming back up to that group here. Simone as well, fighting their way back to Menchov. Menchov very steadily making the tempo. Contador only able to stay on his wheel, but they're both chasing this man right here. So we have five of the leaders for the GC still pretty close together and Emmanuel Isela is just up the road from this man Ricardo Rico who's doing an incredible last couple of kilometers of the Paso Fedaya. Well there's no doubt they are reeling him in but will they reel him in fast enough here now the Simone has yo-yoed all day today well I guess you do that at 36 years of age but he's coming back again up to those chasers. Well the chaos of the Tifosi as we come up to the towards the final kilometer of racing and it's really now I think going to be a question of survival for Emmanuel Seller because Ricardo Rico really is pulling this race back together but these guys behind will not give up Rico as Bob said is looking for 57 seconds over Alberto Contador to try and get the Malia Rosa so for Alberto Contador it's just a question of controlling not panicking and I'm sure the team management are calming him down in his uh, race radio in his ear Bob let's not forget that tomorrow is a hill climb time trial a brutal stage again tomorrow up to the Coron Plan de Corones and this is a little bit of a problem this is distracting for his seller now yeah. and he's trying to ask the spectators to please let him just get to the finish line and not run next to him screaming. Well, he's, well, trying I can understand that. he's trying to keep his rhythm and uh, finally he's got into the, the safe zone now, the quiet zone, it's barriered off. He's talking to the team manager, what's going on? Am I going to survive? Will I win as I did yesterday? And they're probably explaining to him that just behind him, almost in the same straightaway as Ricardo Rico, and it looks like we're starting to form a four-man chasing group here behind Rico because there you can see the return of Gilberto Simone, 161, and of course Danilo De Luca, number one, riding himself back into the Giro. And uh, Ricardo Rico is not that far ahead of that chasing group of four as we continue to head up one kilometre to the top. One kilometre of pain, and he knows they're coming. Can he hang on and complete the perfect two days in the Dolomites, winning every climb and both stages? It's going to be touch and go. We're getting the car headlights on now. It is pretty miserable conditions up here, but it could be worse, Bob. It could be definitely worse. Here's Rico just a little bit further down the mountain. He's got just over a kilometre to close the gap if he wants to win the stage, but I think he's trying to go for the pink jersey as well, and he has put some clear daylight between himself and the group of four that is 
chasing, including Contador. Great style, looking very fluent, very comfortable, and he really has put some of the big names of the sport Phil, into serious difficulty. But he's only got himself, I would say, a little bit of an advantage over the group. But you can see here, Contador now, he really is suffering. Well, Contador's cracked again, I no, think. He has, no, he's, he's gone, gone away, he's gone away. He's moved away there to chase Ricardo Rica. Now, we've got to watch on the one kilometre to go. It's looking pretty good, I think, for Seller now. I've got it at around about the unofficial one-minute mark, so all he's got to do is just keep getting out of the saddle here. Uh, the, I don't think that time check is quite right because I made it uh, around about a, a minute ago that we went under the kilometre to go, but look at Alberto Contador just coming through the crowd there. Bob, this is what makes a great champion. You can be under serious difficulty at one stage, and the next minute you go ahead like a charging bull. He is so tough. He recognised the danger that was being presented by Ricardo Rico, and even though he is really suffering, you can see that written all over his face. Contador in pure pain, he still has the courage to try to close the gap down to Ricardo Rico, and he's doing it. He's catching back up to Rico right now. Well, the GC tonight, the overall, it could well be Contador, Rico, Luca and Menchov. They could be the top four riders in the Giro as they go to the time trial tomorrow. And Contador, he's showed us a lot these last two days. This is a most brilliantly talented cyclist, but he's learned the art of really suffering to succeed. Well, I think he went to the, the master's school because I'm sure he's learned an awful lot from Lance Armstrong. Let's not forget that Armstrong uh, brought this young man into the fold uh, a little while back to ride for Team Discovery Channel. And when you look at the way he climbed, when you look at the cadence, it's very reminiscent of the style of Lance Armstrong, Bob. And they've learned to spin a smaller gear, perhaps, than the other riders. That doesn't build up the lactic acid quite as quickly, but you have to be so very gifted to be able to do that. Well, we're back with the chasers here now. Menchov and De Luca. Rico is beginning to suffer here now. He probably knows that Contador is coming after him. That'll lend him to panic just a little bit. He's coming up to one kilometre to go now. Well, I tell you what, uh, I don't think we have to worry about Emmanuel no. Seller winning because I've got two minutes and 45 seconds on my clock as we look at the banner there over the road. So Seller has ball, just got to get to the finish. That gives you an idea in time just how steep this climb really is. It's taking them nearly four four minutes to climb a kilometer. Absolutely brutal. There is Sutla. He's within the last couple of hundred meters of the stage, and he is suffering. He still has a few hundred meters to go, but what a great ride through the Dolomites for this man on the CSF Navigati team, Emanuele Sela, just a few pedal strokes before glory. Well, I tell you what, Phil, it gets to the easier part of the climb here because we're only at 12% and it's oh. all the way up to the line. The line is just around the corner. This man has hurt his body here this afternoon. He was a hero yesterday on Italian television. I don't know what they're going to make of him tonight. Well, they've run out of superlatives now because, remember, he did the same tactic and they must have thought he was crazy at the start of the day. He out of the blocks and into the break, just like he did yesterday, and they haven't seen him. He's now waving to everybody here because they won't come back. Emmanuel Seller wins what is his third career victory, but his second this year of the Giro d'Italia. Now, he, in, 19, in 2004, he was 12th. In 2005, he was 10th. In 2007, he was 11th. And now he's going to be up in the top ten again after this performance. I'm pretty sure about that. And he's also going to really nail that green jersey to the mast. I think we might as well uh, send that green jersey by uh, FedEx or something down to the finish line in Milano because as far as I'm concerned, this man has got this sewn up here this afternoon. Maximum points, phenomenal performance. <laughs> He's kissing the green jersey because I think he's worked out he's won that jersey today with a week to go. Uh, we haven't worked it out, we're assuming he has. He probably has looked at this a long time ago. He's got maximum points throughout the Giro d'Italia. Not only has he won the King of the Mountains competition, but another stage twice on the run, oh, and he oh. is a very happy man. That's an absolutely superb performance by Emmanuel Seller. The clock is counting now. Here's De Luca and Contador back with him. Also Menchov and Simone. They haven't managed to nail back, though, uh, this right. Ricardo Rico, who is racing up to second place, then the clock will start to see if it's enough to get pink. Well, that's what he needs. If he wants to get the Malia Rosa at the end of the day, he's looking for 50 second seconds ahead <laughs> of Alberto <laughs> Contador at the start of the day. And uh, that's Pozzo Vivo coming to the finish line, who left this group about five kilometers ago. So CSF Navigati absolutely flying on today's stage. Rico chasing Pozzo Vivo, but he will not catch him before the finish line. Paul Sherwin knows all about Pozzo Vivo, don't you, Paul? Oh, I certainly do, Phil. He's been around for an awful long time. You know, last year he didn't get himself a victory, but he did ride the Giro d'Italia. 
Yes, way back in 2004, so he's an experienced bike rider, but he's never won a race in his career. Amazing, and he's going to get second on what is the toughest stage so far in the Giro d'Italia. Plenty of cheers there, but look at this now. De Luca's cracking them, and again, Contador on the defensive. Remember, 57 seconds, and then he won't get that pink jersey at the end. He's got a ride against Ricardo Rico. De Luca doing the damage, Simone trying to close the gap, and Contador, who had a little bit of daylight, is going to have to struggle back to the wheel of Danilo Di Luca. It's going to be very close, and they are closing down the gap to Ricardo Rico, who is just barely holding on. But De Luca trying to get across to Rico right now, and they have got a great rivalry going. Well, Contador seeing pink now, and he's just got to keep that rider in the white best young riders jersey in his sights. We go back to the finishing line. It is going to be a one-two for the team of the race. They also lead this in the team competition, and they've increased it. Well, he's going to have to find a little bit of a sprint here, uh, but he doesn't deserve to lose it now. Domenico Pozzovivo, another Italian crossing the line in second, and Orico coming up to the line, and that's his best ever result for sure. And Orico, he hits the line now, so his clock starts at 2.10 on the screen, and now he needs about 57 seconds. It's not going to happen for him today, but who knows what will happen tomorrow. Paul, this race, instead of opening up in these two days, has closed right down. Completely and utterly. There's uh, Alberto Condor, 2.27 for him. He's well inside. He's kept his uh, Malia Rosa lead over Rico by a good 30 seconds. So it should very well much be Alberto Condor in the Malia Rosa this evening. So it is Sela Possibiva, Rico De Luca. Contador gets over the line there in sixth place. And uh, it should be enough uh, to be pulling on the pink tonight. It might even be that in second place will be Rico, De Luca will be third, Menchoff will be fourth. It's going to be a big workout in the time trial tomorrow. Now, this is Cloden here. Last few minutes on the climb, he's found a uh, pair of legs there to try and fly up to the line. Bruce Jean just coming around the corner. This is Jürgen Vandenbroeke, and he's uh, done a fine performance here this afternoon. Bruce Jean, you can just see behind the car there in the Lamprey jersey, trying to keep himself up in the top five or six places in the overall classification. I think the man coming up there in the uh, lime green will be Franco Pelizzotti. Pelizzotti suffering in the final kilometers of this race. Teddy Valjevec just in front of him. And uh, we thought that, that that man in green right there, Pelizzotti, would do something, but uh, the things did not fall his way on today's stage. Well, it is Seller who has won today, and he kisses his green jersey. He's enjoyed the moment, and what a moment it has been for him. Back-to-back -back wins in the Giro d'Italia in the Dolomites and leads over the top of every climb. Boy, you'd have got a good price in the bookmakers to bet on that ever happening. Well, this is the stage result, and for the second day, the same man on top, Emmanuel Seller, beating his teammate, uh, Possevivo, by two minutes and five seconds. Ricardo Rico, best of the favourites in third, and Danilo De Luca there in fourth. A little bit further down, Contador comes home, 2.27 down, but gets the pink jersey, followed home by Menchoff, uh, Jürgen Vandenbroek, Brusjagin, and the top ten completed by Valjevic. Let's remind ourselves of the Captain Morgan ride of the day. Well, who else could it be but the winner today for the second day, Emmanuel Seller. He tops all of the mountains. He attacks from the gun for two days running, and then he gets to the finishing line, and he waves to the crowd. He also kisses his green jersey. He's been the only leader of the King of the Mountains so far. That's our Captain Morgan ride of the day. And there he is, punches the sky, Emmanuel Seller, the champion of the Dolomites. He's reflecting what Ivan Para did in this race in 2005. He also won back-to-back -back mountain stages. But what a terrific performance by Ivan Emmanuel Seller today, and a very nice trophy too for the king of the mountains of this year's Giro d'Italia. Well, on a day when six riders gave up the Giro, Alberto Contador tops the lot of them now. 33 seconds is all his gap is over Rico, 55 over De Luca. And really, looking down these top five riders, anyone could win the Giro. Further down, Simone still a threat in sixth place, and the top ten completed now by Manuel Sella. Of the Americans riders and our notable riders, Leipheimer lost nine minutes today, finishing down in 19th place overall. And by the way, as we look at the other placings here, the pink jersey of Basicio, he came home almost 15 minutes back. And he's all smiles. Well, he's got four yellow jerseys from the Tour de France, but now he gets a pink one from the Giro d'Italia. And one has to ask the question, what do the organizers of the Tour de France think now? The team they've turned away from their race now leads the Giro d'Italia. Alberto Contador, the man in pink for tomorrow's time trial.
Well, it all started on the island of Sicily. It will end in Milan next Sunday with an individual time trial. You can see it all unfold at three next Sunday as Cyclism and Sundays are brought to you by Hampton Hotels concludes the Giro d'Italia. And don't forget, too, for a complete schedule of our coverage, come on to our website at versus.com. Congratulations, then, to Emmanuel Seller, and many congratulations to the new leader, the fifth in the Giro so far, Alberto Contador. Until next week, on the roads of Milan, for Bob Roll, Paul Sherwin, I'm Phil Liggett saying goodbye for now.